Michael. You sound fine, but I know you can't hear. You can't hear. Um, is there any reason to tell what an inner liner is and when you equalize the tire? Okay. <coughs> yeah, I did. Sends us back to third. Hey guys, yep. guys, keep, keep in mind, this is Ricky Rudd's last stop. He doesn't have to stop again. The thought down here is that most of the leaders, oh, the rest of the leaders will have to stop. Hello, hello, let's try this box and see if that's any different. You know, that's a good point. Everybody is going to have to stop. Hit me in my talk back, Ben. A caution would change. See if I can uh, hear you. Rudd can definitely go the distance. Though. All right. Yeah, I think I got it hot. That was awful close Thanks. there. It sure was close. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> ben, talk to me. I'm right, just making sure I got you. Thank you. Yep. Thanks. That was weird. Right. Okay, so where was I <laughs> when I stopped hearing? Coca-Cola 600, 167,000 seats sold out, infield packed, watching as Bobby Labonte is trying to replicate what he did in 1995, trying to close on Earnhardt Jr. at the present time. There's your Kermit leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., who shattered all the records in qualifying on this mile and a half. Out in front, the new dominator. Question is, can Lavati or his own dad or Matt Kenseth take it away from him in this final 100 mile great summer? Earnhardt Jr. leading once again, 22 lead changes. The caution flag has been flown six times for 34 laps. We've had one red condition because of rain for over an hour. We're back at it with an average speed of 140 miles per hour. And get this, up to 43 starters for this 600-mile race, 39 are still functioning, still going at it here on the high banks of Lowe's Motor Speedway. Let's get back with Alan Bestwick. Ken, thank you. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has led 149 of the 336 laps so far. Field summary, upper left of your screen, showing where drivers started, where they're running now. Terrific night for Matt Kenseth. Well, terrific night for the two top rookies so far. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Kenseth in the top three. Dale Earnhardt has had kind of a hot and cold night, running in fourth right now. Some sets of tires he's looked like a rocket ship on wheels, and some sets of tires he's struggled mightily with. Dale Jarrett, just kind of a so-so night so far for him. Steve Park recovering from an early spin at lap 81 to run in the top 10 now. Jeff Gordon, well, just hasn't been there all night for Jeff Gordon. Rusty Wallace has fallen back. He had some trouble on a pit stop a moment ago when in second came out ninth. The final car on the lead lap at this point is Mark Martin in 12th place. All these cars now one lap down, including Ward Burton and Tony Stewart. Johnny Benson, 37th to 15th. Been a good night, but a out of the headlines night for Benson, if you will. He's not been focused on much during this event because he's spent a lot of it a lap down, though running well among those cars. Rick Mast suffering from food poisoning. 
Just a couple of bags of IV during the rain delay that we had earlier in the event. Runs A.J. Foyt's car in 18th position. Jerry Nadeau led so much of this race. What a night for Nadeau. 115 laps he was out in front. But just as we got to the rain delay, the engine started skipping on his car. A valve spring problem suspected. Nadeau being overtaken by the leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. For a second time, he's back in 20th position. Looking at the rest of the field summary, Jeffrey Bodine has run the whole distance so far in his Chevrolet, 27th position for Jeffrey. John Andretti back in 33rd spot. The car Andretti started anyway. Tim Fiedewa now behind the wheel of that machine after making the driver change earlier. Andretti with the broken rib. And the drivers out of the event include Dave Blaney, Scott Pruitt, Ricky Craven, and Bill Elliott. Ken Schrader's car is also just gone behind the wall after damage from the crash he was involved in at lap number 310. Story right now, solid lead for Dale Jr. 2.7 seconds over Bobby Levani. You know, I was just watching him as we were getting that run down from you through traffic. He is so, I mean, he's driving it in there like he's trying to catch somebody. He's leaning on that car pretty hard right now. I'm sure they're probably trying to slow him down but uh, I, I think he's being a little bit careless in traffic. But, buddy, you've driven these 600-mile races before. You've won three of them. We hear drivers talk about rhythm a lot. When you were in a rhythm in those races and you were running well and you were pulling away from the field, did you want to listen to your crew chief, Harry Hyde or whoever, saying, slow down? I'd usually say, I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you know, you have a great car and you bring up a great point. It's like, it's like playing the violin. Once you get a good rhythm and, and the song in your mind, then you play it well. If you start backing off, it changes the, the characteristic of the race car even. He's in the zone right now. Tony Gurry in the upper right-hand corner of your screen is crew chief watching young Dale Earnhardt Jr., this phenomenal 25-year-old third-generation driver, lead here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. What a night they're having. On the outside of Tim Fiedewa in the John Andretti car. Tony Urey sitting up there looking at his wristwatch. Yes, it is getting late. Now he's checking the time, too, as he goes around here. Yeah. How long before I get a chance to have a beer? Now, we're <laughs> inside the final 100 miles. This is the point where the driver's mental and physical toll begins to take effect. Mechanical toll can begin to take effect. We'll talk more about that after we check in the garage on the latest retiree from this race. Marty? Well, Kenny Schrader had such high hopes coming into the day. And, Kenny, first tell us what happened in the wreck. First, <laughs> first time we wound up, we kind of got wrecked. You know, everybody checked up. This time I just plain old screwed up. And uh, we were loose. And I was driving it too. I mean, just fun to think. We're in the last 100 miles. Is this where the fatigue factor for those guys out there really sets in? Nah, them guys are pumped up. Got to worry about them engines and valve springs sometimes, but them boys ain't going to lay down on them. There you go. Kenny Schrader in because they're trying to fix the rear end of the car. He said the spoiler was just laying down too much. He couldn't hold it out on the racetrack, so he's getting ready, in fact, to go back out on the racetrack as we speak. Interesting analysis. What he has just said is that the men are stronger than the machines. With the way today's drivers are conditioning themselves and so on, nutrition and fluids and training and so on, I think that's probably true. Listening to the right music in the case of our leader. <laughs> yeah. But back to what you're talking about, most of the race shops have a gym inside. They build it in just like they build the dynos for the race shop to build motors for these cars. They know that that team's just as important. The, the driver's got to do his job but it is a team effort. They, you don't win this by just having a strong driver. You see the huge interval from Dale Earnhardt Jr. back to Bobby Labonte, the second place car, but Bobby may get a little chance to catch up some here because Jr.'s hung in some pretty heavy lap traffic. An update on Bobby Labonte from Pit Road. Alan, the changes they made in the last pit stop have really helped Bobby Labonte. They made a wedge adjustment, an air pressure adjustment, and right now they have been discussing what to do on this last stop. They had originally thought they would go fuel only with about 15 laps to go, but Bobby just radioed in to Jimmy Maypark that the car is loosening up on him. They've decided to go for tires, probably around 20 laps to go in the race. Patience, young man. And patience. I'm telling you, he's not leaving much on the table. He's driving the heck out of that race car. And he 
they gave him a clear high a little while ago. They really wanted him to go on the outside of that 77, but Junior just decided, no way I want to get on the outside of that 77 car the way he's been loose all night. Just waited his time a little bit. Down on the bottom. Look at him go. Whoa. Dr. No. Yep. Up next on TBS. <laughs> James Bond movie. I know them all. Yes, you do. Almost dialogue from them. That's scary. That's James Bond right there. That's Joining us now. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Joining us now, looking for the movie. The reason we're not done with the race yet is because we had a 51-minute delay for rain in the middle of the event. Let's dip a little bit farther back away from the lead as Jeremy Mayfield races Dale Jarrett for the fifth position. Napa Field summary, upper left of your screen. While Mayfield and Jarrett go at it here for a top-five spot. There's Jeff Burton right behind them. He's running in seventh. Trying to scratch and claw his way up toward the front. Riding with Ward Burton here as we look ahead at the race for fifth position. Ward got behind very early in the race because of his hard pace that uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s at. Ran pretty well since then, but hey, he's already two laps down. Ward came into the event only three points behind Bobby Labonte in the race for the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship. Here's DJ down low. He'll make the pass on Mayfield. Fifth spot now to Dale Jarrett. Car definitely set up for long, long runs. They said that at the uh, break there when the weather was so bad. Jerry Nadeau bailing out of the high lane with the lead lap cars. Room to run by him. They're also talking about tires, and Goodyear did bring a new tire here tonight. One of the interesting observations out of that 88 team, Brad Parrott, who's responsible for the tires, said that the new Goodyear is so good, it was sticking the front so well, it was actually tossing the back end of the car out a little bit. They have gone to a very different setup than they have ever run here before. Talked with Dale Jarrett a little bit earlier in the weekend about running the extra 100 miles here at Charlotte. He says communication between a driver and his crew chief is one of the key factors in the race. Mentally and, and physically, it comes into play. You know, you, you know that that extra 100 miles does a lot of things. It does things to the car, so you have to take care of the car, so that works on you mentally. Certainly physically, uh, sitting in there another uh, 30 minutes is, is difficult. Uh, you know, that becomes uh, the tiresome time, but you know, I think that's why a lot of us work hard uh, physically to, to get in condition so that we can be in good shape when it comes down to the end. Dale went on to say that trying to make the right adjustments and keeping that communication open back and forth to the crew to make sure the car is the most that it can be at the end of the race is important. Well, Rick Mass tonight will come up shy of the finish, the beginning of mechanical toll, past 500 miles. Yep, absolutely. Yep. He took her up straight behind the wall, too. He knows it's pretty much over with. Yeah, you see the smoke coming out of the pipes like that, and it's just it's done. He was running in 19th position at the time. And Rick Mast and the A.J. Foyt car will come up shy of completing tonight's Coca-Cola 600. The interval between Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Bobby Labonte is somewhat stabilized at about 4.2 seconds. Matt Kenseth a little ways off of Labonte's back bumper, another three seconds, a little under three in third. Then Dale Earnhardt closing on Kenseth the race for that position. That'll be third and fourth when he gets there. And then it's another three seconds from Earnhardt back to Dale Jarrett in fifth, Jeremy Mayfield in sixth, Jeff Burton in seventh. The rest of the top ten drivers at this point are Steve Park, Mike Skinner, and Rusty Wallace. And the final two on the lead lap are Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin looking at moving up. Jeremy Mayfield's picked up eight positions since lap number 250. Stone and Marlin also eight positions up. Jeffrey Bodine picking them off a little bit at a time, deeper in the field. Slides back from Jerry Nadeau with the engine problem we talked about. Ricky Rudd, after the uh, equalized tire pit stop under the green flag earlier, has slipped back to 17th. And Rick Mass is going to drop a lot farther than that, 26. Now that the engine has apparently let go on that machine, and he's gone into the garage. Now we're moving up, moving back. Give a call to Jeffrey Bodine. He has yeah. gone 500 miles in a Winston Cup stock car race. Quite an accomplishment that none of us thought was going to be possible for those of us who stood there and watched him at Daytona go end over end over end in that truck. There's Bodine just in front of the leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jeffrey running in 26th position now. Tough, gritty guy. He is in that car for the rest of the year. There were some stories floating around about how he probably lost his ride and maybe things weren't working out, but he has been assured, assured me this morning, he said, I've got this ride for the remainder of the year 